Hello, everybody. Welcome in. It's a dark day. Things are down. We'll explain why, but we'll also explain why the future is bright. Touch on a little bit of history as well and look at the crazy ETF flows and predictions and a new price model and a new correlation model. All this stuff will blow your mind. And maybe, maybe the markets are just being manipulated. But literally, everything that's happening right now may seem dark and dreary, but it's good. So let's go. And uh, shout out as well to the newest Patreon person, Matt Shellback. Patreon, wow, has paid for itself. Never get to catch these things live. Glad to see you. So happy these days. <laughs> doing good. Now I'm doing... If you're doing good, now I am too. Excellent. Thank you so much for the shout out, Matt. And thank you all in Patreon for making this happen. Uh, this is the Bitcoin Only playlist. Link here if you need it afterwards. Bitcoin price is at levels we have not seen since Tuesday. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's... The, the manipulation is nuts it's freaking nuts and i don't know if it's leverage longs being wiped out or some type of jane street messing with the markets or filling the bags of the etfs but this is happening every single day like clockwork anywho back to the good news 34 days to the bitcoin having guy it's gonna be 30 days what on saturday sunday so so close and happy pie day everybody as well Thank you for coming, Linda, and to make sure I got everybody. Sir Winston and Silicon Valley Stoic. It's Pi Day. Pi Day has two meanings. First of all, the history of pie, beautiful pie here, uh, has deep roots uh, because both Bitcoin and this channel and pie is mathematics. It's also 314, 3.14 pie. It's also uh, a person's birthday who will remain nameless. Uh, close to me. So lots of celebrations too. But it also has another interesting uh, relative too. We'll talk about that. And this is the other type of pie. This is the pizza pie, as some people call it. And a lot of people think pie 314. Also, May 22nd, 2010, somebody sold 10,000, somebody sold 10,000 Bitcoin for two pizzas. I think it's kind of interesting to think about this pie as well. But that's $720 million today, which is a lot of money, which is crazy. Anyway, enough of the history. Let's get into the meat of this. First of all, the markets are rattled because the PPI is high. Purchasing price index, kind of like the CPI, but the PPI stuff. And again, as I've said a thousand times, the Fed does not control inflation. It's only a matter of time before they have to cook the books to be able to pretend that inflation is at this magical two percent which they do not control the only thing the fed can do is destroy demand and break things they can't control what happens in the red sea or what happens to prices or what opec do with oil etc so i wish the fed would cop on to that but they're obviously not going to and this is the piece that rattles the market is now people are hoping for a rate cut back in let me see may that's all being pushed forward to june and now it looks like the May meeting, which is in two months, will be constant. But it doesn't matter if it's 25 base points down or whatever. It doesn't matter. The government is spending nearly 70% of their revenue on interest, on debt, and they're issuing a hundred trillion, no, <laughs> a trillion dollars of debt every hundred days. It's just nonsense. The whole thing is nonsense. And that's why we Bitcoin, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this came out too, which also rattled the markets. And one of the reasons the Fed needs to keep rates high is they have to sell their debt to attract investors. Everybody knows the US dollar and all fiat is going down. Why would you buy debt, give money over for a crappy 4% return when you know it's debasing a lot more than that when they're borrowing another 100 trillion every 100 days it's bonkers now janet yellen came out and said we're gonna have to keep rates higher probably forever we'll never get back to the zerp levels because they need to attract investors in fact nobody is buying the debt they're having problems issuing it therefore they're coming up with new stealth ways to issue debt one of them is through a new bank program as well it's crazy anyway this is why we do not hold fiat 
we hold hard assets. Okay. Uh, BlackRock, speaking of them holding hard assets, they now have 16.3 billion dollars <laughs> in Bitcoin. 16.3 billion dollars in value in 43 days. That's pretty big. Pretty big. Well done, well done, BlackRock. And uh, let's look at the cumulative flows too. You can see it's just this is less grayscale Bitcoin trust. By the way, Bitcoin. When I started this, we were at 69.6 on the Bitcoin price. Now we're 70,400 because they have liquidated every. They fill their bags. They fill these bags. And this is just a cumulative flow. Keeps going up and up and up. We'll break down all the ETF flows as well. But we have a new cool math model. Shout out to Uncle Fred. It's Fred Math Time. He came out with this and he says, this is key. One million Bitcoin out of 20, which is 5%, is in the ETPs, ETFs, whatever you want to call them, versus only 1% to 1.5% for gold. All right. So basically the concentration of Bitcoin in these funds is a lot higher than the concentration of gold in the ETFs. And the reason is for central banks, because they hold the actual metal and not the ETFs. Ultimately, central banks will buy actual Bitcoin. And that's really the final boss in hyper Bitcoinization. This is key. The final boss is something to do with video games or whatever. But the final challenge, once central banks start allocating to Bitcoin, game over. And that day is going to happen. But what's also interesting is another piece of math here. Make sure I have this in sequence. And I think I forgot the actual positioning slide, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to break down some new math. This is looking at the current run rate of money in these ETFs. As you know, on this channel, I like numbers. So in Feb, there was 170,000 Bitcoin into the ETFs. March, 153. Together, in just 60 days, 270,000. Now, if you look at 170K, that means the market cap of Bitcoin increased by 5 billion. 153K, market cap increases by 10 billion, and another 15 billion, etc. The rest of the year will be 100 billion. And that means, based on Uncle Fred's 70 multiplier, which is sometimes 72, 70, whatever you want to call it, that means the market cap of Bitcoin could go to $7 trillion on top of the existing 1.4 trillion. That would be a market cap of the year end of 8.4 trillion. And that would equate to a Bitcoin price of $430,000. And he also says there's an outside chance of a million dollar Bitcoin. <laughs> so when you see Bitcoin falling from yesterday, 73, down to 69.6, back to 70,200, and it's the same price as Tuesday, don't sweat it. That's why I always say wear your seatbelt. Now, these numbers are crazy, but again, it assumes the flow continues. Now, let's look at the flow. I decided to take this a little further and identify if there is correlation between the flow into the ETFs and the Bitcoin price. And guess what? It is a crazy correlation. Bitcoin bonkers correlation, I call it, to ETF money flow. So on the bottom, you've got Bitcoin price. On the left axis, you've got the actual money flows in millions of dollars. So it goes up to $12.5 billion. Dollars, And you can see where it began. But when you map the actual daily cumulative inflow into the ETFs to the price of Bitcoin, the correlation is 0.962. For any statist statisticians in the audience, they will know that's a crazy high correlation. Now, if we take 100, say imagine we get to 100 billion for the year, you divide that by 12 and a half, it equals to eight. 12 and a half is what we have already, approximately. Eight times the current price of Bitcoin, 70,000. You could get as high as 560K. You multiply that by 0.96 and you get down around 500K, which is not too dissimilar from this 430K a year on price target. Again, it's crazy. The numbers simply, the numbers add up. But when you crunch through them all and look at the money flow and the hardness and the having coming up. This stuff doesn't even take into account the having. It really starts to melt your mind. Anyway, exciting time to be alive. Let's look a little bit further as I talk about this T plus one manipulation. I started talking about this on the 12th of January and it keeps on happening like clockwork on a daily basis. The manipulation, boom, down, ETS buy, boom, down, price goes up, 
then it crashes the next day, crashes because that crashes the next day, etc., etc., etc. It's nonstop, so don't be shaken out of your position. Is the basic point there. Now, speaking of risks and stains on humanity, this is Craig Wright. He is a stain on humanity. 2024, as I was always hoping it would be the year of truth, it's time to obliterate the liars and let the purge begin. The judge said, CSW is not the author of the white paper. CSW is not Satoshi. CSW is not the creator of Bitcoin, and CSW did not author the Bitcoin software. He's a scammer. But you know what? There's an easier sign tell. A cypherpunk would never dress like such a tosser anyway so <laughs> that's a dead giveaway you should be wearing like skateboard and shorts and t-shirt that'd be more more of a closer image to what the true satoshi party looked like anyhow moving on from scammers the infinite glitch this is fascinating and this is a big part of the whole micro strategy play and we even see coinbase doing something similar uh micro strategy yesterday announced offering another half a billion dollars of securities convertible note securities to raise more money to buy more Bitcoin. It's like he is in an arms race against BlackRock, see who can build the biggest bag fastest. And with both Sailor raising this money, obviously in the aftermarket, of course, the market's a bit different today, but it actually went up on this news. Normally when people issue convertible debt, it rattles markets, the price goes down. But now people understand the glitch, the infinite glitch, of Sailor issuing money to buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin goes up in price. His stock goes up in price. More people have to buy it and add it to their funds. And just wait till this thing gets added to the S&P 500. That'll be game over. But he has identified the infinite money glitch out there. Now, when they say they're going to raise 500, they said last time they would raise 600 million at 0.65%. They end up raising 800. I estimate they're going to try to raise 500. They're probably going to be oversubscribed and raise $700 million. And that's going to go straight into Bitcoin as quickly as possible. Okay, and that's a big bag. <laughs> and remember, you take that 700 million, multiply it by the factor of 70, and then you get the impact on price divided by 15 million coins. That's your number. Now, Joe B, Joe Burnett, shout out to Joe. Sailor has turned hyper-financialized institutional credit markets and public equity markets into a Bitcoin printer. Yes, he has. You issue low interest, unsecured convertible notes, and you buy a Bitcoin and you increase the Bitcoin price per share and you repeat until we get to $5 million. <laughs> Now, the funny thing of what Joe here said is, which public company will do this next? We already said Coinbase. We don't quite know. We, it says in their filing that they're going to pay back some debt and stuff. Sigdiv, thank you for coming. But we don't know. But this is going to become more and more commonplace as well. Especially when people... Like, the game is simple. I've been talking about it for a long time. You go short your fiat and you go long a hard asset. Okay? I used to talk about this real estate. You borrow at 3%. You borrow a million dollars at 3%, 10 years interest only fixed. You don't repay any principal. After 10 years, you're only repaying half of it because of debasement. It's the same thing here. It's financial jujitsu, as I call it. Anyway, that expression hasn't caught on yet, but maybe one day it will. Sometimes mine do. Now, more Bitcoin history, which is kind of interesting as well, uh, from Fred Krueger. One thing that I think uh, is going to go with Bitcoin adoption is the 60-40 portfolio, which nobody wants bonds on melting ice cubes, which is fiat. That's 40% of this portfolio. And the idea of indexing 60% of your funds to the stock market and holding the remaining in a leaky bucket of fiat bonds is our version of the Catholic Church in the 17th century saying, how dare you think the earth goes around the sun, Signor Galileo. I just love history. You can learn a lot from history. And that's amazing. That's back then when they thought the world was flat and they wouldn't believe this person. The same thing's happening today. People preaching 60-40. It's nonsense. It's stupidity. Um, now, speaking of mistakes, one year ago from Rizzo, the US government sold 10,000 Bitcoin for $215 million. That's about 20K a pop. <laughs> that's worth uh, over 700, well, 700 million today. So timing is everything in the markets and uh, the government sometimes don't make good decisions. 
Anywho, Digital Asset US, thank you for coming. Let's talk about some other stuff that's happening. Speaking of 6040s and drainage and new assets, we've got continued, continued drainage from the gold ETFs into all the Bitcoin funds. If you look at this chart, it'll tell you very clearly what's going on, especially the acceleration in early 2024. And of course, the impact of the ETFs just going up and to the right. And that is what I call the new Bitcoin black hole. It's sucking everything in, all assets. It's going to suck in the bond market. I'll talk more about some stats for that too in a second. Uh, maybe elements of the equity market, as Sailor says. And of course, gold and everything else. Do not hold on to your fiat. Now, yesterday, I have my vol predictor. Let's see how close I came. Um, I estimated yesterday we would be buying uh, 6,653 Bitcoin for BlackRock and 265.9. No, that is uh, the money flow. Let's look at the money flow. Sorry. 485.6 million in BlackRock and 265.9 million in Fidelity. And let's see how close we came. Yesterday was actually higher for BlackRock, it was 586.5 versus 485 per the model. And Fidelity was closer, 281.5 versus my guess at 265.9. I wouldn't say it's a guess, it's a predictor. But just looking today, let me just check right now on the fly. Real time spot. Oh, wow. I have to share this because it's so big. Give me one second. Let me pop this up. This is real what I look at in terms of the volume and how the volume is so important. Uh, let me see if you all can see that. On the right-hand side, cast your eyes in the 77.096. We have another hour to go. BlackRock's already at 77 million in shares. I can tell you right now, that's going to convert tomorrow to an awful lot more. That's going to convert tomorrow to about 600 to 800 million dollars worth of purchases of Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is flat. It doesn't make sense. It's illogical. Anyway, let's break down the actual numbers. Uh, day 43. Can you believe it? It's only day 43. I feel like I've been doing this for years already. And uh, the big news there is GBTC, orange, 276 million. Not bad dumpage day. But big numbers for both Fidelity and BlackRock. Let's look at what this looks like. You can see the dip in BlackRock. BlackRock had their biggest day ever on Tuesday. And Fidelity had a good day. They always run counter to each other, these two. And Grayscale's still dumping, but it's not too bad. Now, the ba this is the money flow. Again, it is still, despite how it looks, it was the second best day ever from 43. And money is still going up and to the right. Not bad at all. Let's look at now we have 20, over 24 billion into the nine new ETFs. And the total amount of Bitcoin, I forgot to add it up, but it's 232,819 plus 211,856. Call that north of 450,000 Bitcoin. That heading is wrong. I forgot to change it. We have over 451,000 Bitcoin in these new ETFs. Crazy. Let's see how many were pulled from the market yesterday. This number I did update, 9,348 Bitcoin pulled from the system. Remember, 900 issued today. Miners only sell about 80%, so call it 700. These puppies are sucking in 9,348 a day. Supply crunch, anybody? Yes, it's coming. Let's look at some charts and look at talk about some more of that black hole stuff before I leave you all. Uh, first of all, another reminder of how... Bitcoin is eating gold alive. This is from James Van Stratton and data as well from Atlas Pulse. And it highlights a significant trend. The divergence between the Bitcoin ETF inflows and the gold ETF outflows, with gold experiencing 30 million ounces of outflows over the last year or so. And despite these outflows, gold's price has shown resilience. Uh, Charlie as well notes that gold ETFs, despite their small size compared to the overall gold market, possess a large amount in daily liquidity, about $150 billion. So it's only a matter of time before this asset, gold, continues to get depleted. And then the people that traditionally bought gold, not just the ETF gold investors, but the central banks who buy actual bullion, will start pivoting to Bitcoin. That's when things get really crazy because governments are in a beautiful position. 
They can print money, buy as much Bitcoin and gold, wherever they want. Nobody cares. You know, the, the, the old joke is why, why, why do governments even charge taxes when they just print money anyway? It's like, it's ridiculous. Anyway, Safe Seed and Adam Q, thank you for coming. Uh, let's look at some other stuff. Uh, money market funds. What's interesting about this, some many believe that money market funds, they just exceeded $6.08 trillion. And that's a lot of money. That will start spinning into Bitcoin as well. And this, this cash pool, literally six trillion market cap puts Bitcoin, if part of the six trillion market cap goes into Bitcoin, it'll put the Bitcoin price at $300,000. I'm not even talking about the ETFs. I'm talking about cash money market flowing into Bitcoin on top of the money flowing in from the ETFs too, so crazy when you break all these numbers down also uh bitcoin is now two percent the size of global equity markets total market cap and it's easily going to trend to 10 percent over the next few years or maybe even this year per the bitcoin layer going to 10 percent as a 5x that's three hundred fifty thousand dollars. you see the picture so we have kruger 430,000, got the first estimate money market funds, takes the 300,000. This takes us to 350,000. And these are just all the angles of attack, the attack surfaces of how the price of Bitcoin is going to go up. When you put them all together, you're over a million dollar Bitcoin real fast, which again, melts your mind when you think about it. Um, let's look at uh, TBL. TBL, by the way, is considered a debt market, bond market, etc. Bitcoin has only 1% of the global debt market, stocks and bonds, etc. So a long way to go there too. We just have to wait and see what happens to that. So with that, everybody, some charts, lots of numbers, lots of one plus one equals price predictions, math modeling. Bitcoin's a wonderful place to be. Happy Pi Day. Don't sell your pizza for 10,000 Bitcoin. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to the mods in the chat. Hope you enjoy the show. And Bitcoin's at 69,666, literally as I speak. Wow, that's crazy. Number, uh, it's still weak, but it'll bounce again tonight because BlackRock has to spend $800 million. I estimate, I estimate on Bitcoin tonight. <laughs> I don't know where they're going to get it. Don't sell it to them. Okay, thanks all for coming. See you later. Bye-bye.